המרצה הבא שלנו הוא קי פנטרסן, הוא היוצר מאחורי הסרט המדובר קאוספירסי. סרט שאני ממליץ לכם בחום לראות, ולבוא אחרי זה לספר לי איך היה, כדי שנדע אם כדאי לי גם. סתם, סתם, זה סרט מעולה, אני ראיתי. זה סרט אשר פורס את ההשלכות והנזקים האדירים של התעשיות מן החי על הסביבה ועולמנו. סרט זה הצליח להביא לתודעה ציבורית אדירה ונחשב לאחד הסרטים הסביבתיים החשובים ביותר שנעשו אי פעם. כמו כן, קיפו יזם, מדריך יוגה מוסמך ומייסד חברת אום פילמס אנד מדיה, אשר יוצרת סרטים במדיה המקדמים חמלה, שגשוג והרמוניה לכל מי שניחם בחיים. תנו לו הרבה מחיאות כפיים. comic book superhero convention. Um, instead of the Avengers, it's the, of the Gangers. Of the Gangers. So, um, at, at that note too, I really believe everyone here is, it's a unique situation because we are all superheroes and we have to be. And if you don't believe that you are, then you should really not be here because we have some, a huge duty to do. Whereas in say Marvel Comics and um, typical heroes, They're representing seven billion humans. We, on the other hand, all together, we are representing anywhere, anywhere between 70 billion and a, around a trillion animals of all species. So that's very superhero. They expect us to be nothing less. So please remember that. Um, and anybody, anybody here has been vegans for, say, a year or less? Wow, that's exciting. So it's always exciting when someone just turns vegan or it's just been that, that soon because when some people say, oh, how do you do it? You know, how do you be vegan? And um, you have to give away so much where really, as you, you know, most people eventually realize earlier or later, it's the best blessing that you've ever been gifted. Um, it's one of those things that comes upon you and your whole world opens. And that's why a lot of people think it's kind of the first day of their life because you just can't be, you can't be lied to anymore. You see things in a clear light. You see things from a different angle. You're obviously writing your own path. At the same time, you're living in the future. You're not part of living in the past that you were before. So it's really exciting when people just go vegan. Because I remember when I went a long time ago, I was a hardcore cheeseaholic, like most people. I, I couldn't even go vegan for one single day. And um, I watched, I love asking people how they, turn vegan because it's always a magical aha moment and mine was I watched while eating a cheese pizza watched meet your meat has anyone seen that it's basically earthlings crunched down to in about 12 minutes and without being able to eat cheese without one day I literally threw the pizza across the room and it just I'm done I'm done I, I don't even know if I can this was nine years ago and I was so ignorant <laughs> And I was so ignorant about nutrition, because um, nine, nine years ago it was a little different. I, I only knew one vegan friend, and he was the person who inspired me to try to go one day vegan, I couldn't do it, that I didn't know you could even be healthy. And I said, even if I'm not healthy, it was so powerful at that time when I saw Meet Your Meat in the same time around the environmental things, that I didn't, I saw, if I, I was on that path, I visualized a trail of blood and destruction um, into a grave. And I wanted to stop that right now. I was, you know, I was sad that I lived that for a long time. But so I said, I'm, I'm done with this. And even if I die within 30 days, because I'm not sure you can live healthy to be a vegan, I don't know if it's possible. Um, um, and then it's so amazing because after about two weeks, I ate so much cheese. It's not really the meat. It's the cheese when you get dairy out of your, when you get dairy out of your body, that's when it really, really activates your soul and I could just feel all the blood running through my veins after about two or three weeks. I'm like, I'm gonna live, I can't believe it, I'm not gonna die. So that was a, a huge bonus. Um, so I love asking people and that had it. And then so at the same time, I learned about, all at the same time I got really deep into it, into the vegan world, militant, angry, sad, like all the emotions. And I felt alone, you know, even though I felt incredibly gifted and, and, and so thankful, You know, at the beginning you feel, you feel kind of like you're the only one. Here in Israel, 
you're so fortunate to have the community right with you. And I, I mean, it's um, it's so amazing. I travel all around the world, and I mention you guys because you all are literally leading the entire, this entire planet, really. You guys are leading the way from the grassroots to up how it's done. Um, it's, it's really amazing, so, so hats off to you all. And uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, and so I, I, was, I was feeling alone, and at that same time, I wanted to surround myself with someone who, people who realized who I was, because even to this day, even to this day, after doing Cowspiracy and our, even our new film, my family is not vegan or vegetarian, and most of my best friends are. So it's incredible to be around your community, and that helps so much. So what I did is I went to the Animal Rights Convention in, a long time ago and actually saw Nathan. Nathan was just around here somewhere. Um, he, he was there, and he was doing his, he just had your chicken film, uh, chicken rescue film, and I was meeting all these incredible people and in talks like this, and these people were just blowing me away because here I'm feeling sorry for myself. I'm sad, I'm mad, I'm alone. And I'm seeing these people doing something, and then you'd go to these different, every given hour there's two or three workshops. One is how to break locks, you know, how to break into, and then the whole rumor is that there's FBI lurking around, uh, and there actually was, there's FBI because they're considered terrorists. I'm like, ooh, terrorists? Uh, actually considered terrorists and revolutionaries? Wow, that sounds exciting. And then it all hit me that this is movement, is, is, is you're looking around, you know, if you're in other movements, say, for women's rights, or gay rights, or civil rights, or peace activists. You're, you're surrounded by who you are doing this for. But when you're an animal rights activist, you're doing this for someone that, no, it's not gonna get patted on the back. These people are risking their lives, risking their, their future. You know, these people send, uh, were spending 10 years in jail, all for a species that cannot, can't even thank them. They have nothing to do with them, and it's the most unbelievable, selfless giving and people say, you know, as Perry said to you, wow, that's so amazing that you're vegan and um, that you can do that. And it's really when, you, when the light turns on, you just have no choice. And it's not really stopping doing something. It's not that you're, we're doing something that's amazing. It's just that we're stopping doing something that's so horrific. And sure, there's the environment. And sure, there's the health. But at the core of it, there's innocent animals that need our voice. And so after that... After going to that convention, I realized I'm going to become an animal representative. An animal representative, that's what I'm going to become. And so what does an animal want from me? He wants us to be heroes. And I realized that. I said, I can't feel sorry for myself. I can't feel alone. I can't feel mad. I can't feel angry. I need to represent animals the best way I can. So how do, how do that? And so I have a business background. So what I applied business philosophy to it is that I started with a six month, one year, two year, three year plan of where to visualize what's gonna happen for the entire planet. And so I visualized that we're all going vegan, we already are vegan, the whole planet is either vegan or pregan. Um, everyone I meet, I say, are you a vegan or pregan? And they're like, what's up? Hey, uh, I, I'm not a vegan. Oh, you're a pregan, you're a vegan, you just haven't realized you're a vegan. Yet. Because at the core, we already are, we're just returning back to our roots. If you, if you look at our anatomy and turn it inside out, as most of you know, I'm preaching to the choir, it's the exact same as a chimpanzee, you can even tell the difference. So we're not an omnivore, you know, we are, we're actually frugivores, but so all we're doing is returning home. And um, so when I realized that, realized how to, to, that I was gonna go about this, is looking in the future, so when you're doing a business plan or saying you're captain of the ship and you want to go to another country, or you're, you're sailing, first you have the goal. You have to visualize the goal. There's no stopping you. There's no optimism, pessimism, negative, worrying about other people. You have a goal, and then we work backwards. How did this whole planet become vegan or majorly vegan? How are the plants, how are the animals liberated, this, this planet liberated from this massacre and our health coming back? And so, it's so important, I think, for our movement, a lot of people you meet, it's especially at the beginning, you become disenfranchised and depressed. You have to realize we're not doing this for yourself, you're doing this for the animals. And who, what do the animals want? They want you to be optimistic, they want you to be an example for other people. 
people look up to us. Vegan can never be sick their entire life. That's a, it's impossible. <laughs> Just joking. Just joking on that, but that's a uh, you know, vegan joke. Is once you're once you're sick, I've in the past nine years I think I've been sick one time. Nine years and they, oh, you know, it's your vegan. I'm like, yeah, it's, but um, so can never be sick. But it's very important to to really to really represent animals and think about what they want and get your ego out of the way. I think that's a big point too. Is that I had to deal with, especially with cowspiracy and doing things with film. I never planned on being in the film. I was always supposed to be behind the camera, and Keegan and I started working together. And I said, I'm, I can't do this, I'm very shy. I've never been able to talk in front of people like this. I can't be in front of the camera. And, um, but for Cowspiracy, it was the accum accumulation of me working on that for about five years, so I knew exactly all the questions. And finally, Keegan said, you have to do it. You have to do it and get yourself out of the way. So rather than ego, a lot of people think of egos, you know, you want to be in the center of attention you want. Most of our ego problems is that we feel we're not worthy, we're not strong enough, we're not powerful enough, we're not heroes. So I literally had to get my ego out of the way. This is not about me, this is something way greater than all of us. And you just have to step in that role. And once you do that, you move yourself out of it, it's kind of liberating from your own self. Because you're, A, you're not doing it for yourself, and um, it's just free, you know, of, of the barriers that we, we contain for ourselves. But believe me, it took a lot of time for <coughs> me to even be able to speak in front of anyone. I hit behind Keegan because... <laughs> <laughs> Keegan is actually uh, a musician. He's pretty popular in Europe. So literally the first four, um, when, we, when we did our tour and we had to do talks, I would hide behind him. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta come out here, you gotta come out here. So I've come a long way, but again, like I keep realizing this isn't for me, have to be inside, have to be in the film, and because this isn't doing this is something way greater, and as people ask, are you afraid, or has anything come of it? It really did happen in the film where we put down the camera. It's after talking to Howard Lyman and Will Potter, they really scared us, and we said, are we ready for this? So, you know, are we gonna risk this? Like, I see these people at Animal Rights Conference, and then we realized if we don't do anything collectively on the environmental front, we're all gonna die. So what's the point of not doing anything? So essentially the fear of not doing anything, sitting at home, feeling sorry, being bad, is more scary than, the, than not doing anything, is that we have to stand up because the fear of not doing superseded the fear of doing something. So. Um, and luckily when the film came out, it was very scary, but we found out the animal agriculture industry already knew about the, uh, all the facts. An interesting thing is the first week Cal uh, Cowspiracy came out, um, we were very scared. We didn't know what was going to happen. The very first week, a uh, magazine called beefmagazine.com, <laughs> it was actually a beef magazine, you can imagine the, the centerfold, and uh, they said, beware of the film Cowspiracy is coming out. And essentially, they knew this information. They knew. And, they, and the, the, the article, you can still look it up, the, the article talks about you need to be prepared for your facts and counter them. And the only counter is they said, well, vegetarians, vegans wear t-shirts, and it costs, you know, it's around 200 gallons of water for a t-shirt. Like, we eat a t-shirt. It was the most ridiculous thing. But it showed that not only the environmental groups know about this, is that the, the industry knows about this. Um, but it's an interesting thing, because we get asked that a lot, is that if anything's happened, are we scared? Interestingly enough, no, in the film, in a way, uh, we feel protected us as well. Um, so, and I think a real important thing that I learned over, over time, too, of going through these transformations with myself is really realizing how important it is to focus on that end goal and to focus not only on the end goal, it's, it's basically like the law of attraction where we have to manifest this and we have to visualize this together and that it, not only is it happening, it already happened. It already happened and we're asking ourselves, how did we make it happen? I look in the mirror, how did I make this happen? Because it already happened and it's so necessary to see that, not to look at the negatives or the bads of it, to realize that this already happened and everything is a reflection of you. There's a there's a social studies that I'm sure some of you know of. It's called the 10%, uh, the 10% law. And you guys are very close to it. 
Essentially, when a population um, all agrees on a certain dogma or a certain thing, of only 10% of the population, all of a sudden, like quantum, quantum speed, the entire population adopts that. And they've done studies and studies, and they've done micro studies of this, and it's true. So you only need 10% of the population. Supposedly, you all are around four to five that beyond believe you're actually practicing it, you're doing it. So I feel Israel is going to be the first example of, 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 a, of a culture and a society and a country that once you reach 10%, and I see it happening within, probably with you all, probably within the next three years, bam, it, it's like wildfire. Something happens with our central universal consciousness, especially within a culture or a family where it, where, it, where it takes over everyone. And with that note too, is you don't waste your time on people who are hardcore carnivores or they want to, they want to argue with you and you see there's no, there's no, um, you know, there's no getting anywhere with them. Move on to the people that are having a conversation because we only need 10%. We don't need 100%, we need 10%. And so they're all very close. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and one of the greatest lessons too early on when I was vegan is you, most of you are on different levels of this is that, again, you have friends that aren't vegan, they haven't seen light or whatever it is. And when I first was vegan, I would not go to Thanksgiving. I boycotted Thanksgiving where there's a dead big turkey in the middle of the, you know, while we're giving thanks, like what? And I wouldn't go to barbecues. And then one time it was really drama, big drama with my family. They said, you have to come, your whole family's here, they've flown here, da da da. Said, all right, I'm gonna go. And I was so mad and I was depressed. You could tell I wasn't talking. And I had my six year old, the sweetest little niece, sitting a couple, couple seats away from me. And I wasn't eating, I wasn't eating any animal flesh, go figure. And my sister said, You have to tell my kids why you're not doing that. I'm like, I don't want to say anything. And say, Say why? And I said, because I don't believe in eating animals, and I didn't want to get into it. And then we started eating, and then my little six-year-old sweet niece, she leaned over with a piece of turkey in her mouth, and she says, look what I'm eating, look what I'm eating. And after me being so depressed and so mad, I wanted to throw the plate across, and I could not believe the sweetest little girl said this. And then it reaffirmed, I can't believe I'm here, what am I doing? You know, you guys are making fun of me. I feel stupid. Now I hate my niece. <laughs> and, and then so, and then the day was awkward, but I went through it. Um, and then about three weeks later, my sister gives me a call and she says, well, guess who's vegetarian now? <laughs> and that, that was a huge change, a huge transformation point within myself because I realized it's actually not in the film, but the, but the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love and hate are very similar. It's a passionate thing. Love and hate go very similar together because it's about caring. The opposite of love is indifference. So when half that table didn't think anything of it, but she, you know, had to do this very immature thing, something triggered in her to actually go and do that. So she's giving a reaction. So when you have a reaction from someone, Normally, which is interesting, we have an reaction from someone, especially an adult, at least in the US, you'll find that their reaction is coming from around an eight to 12 year old. They'll make fun of you, like, hey, look what I'm eating. You know, I, I'm eating animals because that's what I do, and there's some very immature thing. And what it is, is it's usually they do something at the age that they became jaded, and they, they almost time travel back to that time where they stopped caring and they shut off from who they truly are. And that's what's so, pr so proof that we are, we are vegetarians, we are vegans, we're compassionate people, because you look at a child, would a child, a six-year-old, seven-year-old, ever kill an animal, ever do anything like that, would never harm? And absolutely not, it wouldn't. So essentially, uh, uh, as, as you have all seen, especially throughout the years of the extra bonuses, other than the veil relieving, and you see the truths, and you see the coming out, and. You, that you're connected to everything at once. You can look an animal in the eye. A big, another bonus is that you regain, or I regained um, connection to my inner child. And that was something that surprised me that was really special because I didn't realize there's an inner child within me 
that that was basically stomped down, that you know had had to be manipulated, that this is normal, and and so that's what was so special is you kind of regain your entire consciousness of yourself too, of who you are at the very core level. And that's why everyone is vegan or pregan because they don't know they already are. If they're not, you know, if they they say they're not, and they put this immature thing, we're omnivores, I kill animals. Um, and especially if they have a kid, you say, can I ask your child some questions? And they say, no, you're not going to do that. Because they know. And that's all we're doing is we're returning to exactly who we always are. And um, we've just strayed away from that. But what's fortunate is right now we're living the most amazing, incredible time in the history since almost Garden of Eden or basically since the paleo time, which reminds me of the paleo story in our new film, I'm not sure if anyone heard is we have our new film coming out called What the Health? And that's coming out in about three weeks. It's super exciting. And, uh, we weren't sure about it because Keegan and I, we've been working on it for two years. And when you watch a movie literally a thousand times, you get, even with Cowspiracy, we get so jaded to knowing any of the facts. And at the time, again, we're like, is this even any good? Should we show this to anybody? But fortunately, and so you guys getting really positive reviews, so we're excited about that. But we address every single thing. So the paleo one's funny. When you, you know, is, is paleo a big thing here? Yeah. You know? It's so funny, the paleo, we're gonna have paleontologists on our film who just laughs at the whole movement. But the big takeaway that if someone's paleo, you talk to them, the big takeaway with paleo is that what they did is they lived within their society, within their environment lived as like kind of Native Americans on their land of what they have. So the takeaway is not that you, you kill and eat a bunch of animals, is that you're living in harmony with your entire planet. So if you're true paleo and you want to honor that, then the last thing you're going to do is eat and kill animals because you watch conspiracy and the, the, the environmental impact. And if you do, um, you're not living a true paleo diet, let alone paleo people back there, they lived maybe in their 30s, and just in the past year, they found remains and they showed complete osteoporosis, the gum disease, uh, all these diseases that, that they have. So why is the goal to live 40,000 years ago? Isn't the goal of what we're living, or what we're living right now, all of us, is we're living 40,000 years in the future. And that's the goal that we want to look at, and that's what we're doing. That's when I go to these barbecues, the, the, the lesson of the story with uh, my niece, I now attend barbecues of my friends. I now go to Thanksgiving. And especially now, I don't have to say anything. You don't have to say anything whatsoever. It's probably better you don't. You just eat quietly and you're the you're peace, your your tofurkey or your, your veggie burger, and just be present. And it's so powerful and it's kind of fun because you see the reactions of people and they'll ask you weird questions. And that's a big thing I see in the movement over the years is people getting stuck in their vegan bubble and that's not doing anything any good. If anything, to go to that restaurant that has the new vegan meal, you know, get out of your, your bubble and go to these things because I don't want to go to a barbecue. I don't want to see dead rotten flesh that I can smell, but it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about what the animals want. The animals want you to do this. The animals want you to turn people on and to just be a role model and to be glowing vegan. And that's the, the most important thing is, again, to get your ego out of the way because it's one of the movements that this has nothing to do with us. Um, and another thing that is, I feel is around 2012 when everybody thought that the world was going to end, which was including me, for the last two years, 2010 and 11, I literally thought, I believed in the Mayan calendar, I thought we were going to die. <laughs> I didn't bet my friend a lot of money. He said, I'll bet you... Bless you. <laughs> Said, I, he said, I, I'll bet you $5,000 we're going to be here. And I'm like, okay. And then I realized, wait, that doesn't make sense. Because <laughs> if we're not here, how am I, I going to win? But so when that happened, that was a big turning point with me. I realized I studied more and more into it around those 32 cultures, 32 different cultures about how 2012 was a turning point. And we've literally entered the next stage of whatever you call it, evolution or whatever. We're in the golden era right now. And that's why everything is happening at a super, super fast speed, exponentially. And it's such an exciting time because now our time has come. Just a few years ago, we were looked at as the weirdos. Now we're looked at as the leaders. We're looked at as the futures. So we're looked at as people who are already living in the future of this society that we are already in. And everything in this entire planet is aligning itself 
to what we are already doing. So we, without force, without energy, other than being active and present and standing up and doing whatever you do well, is that um, the half of the battle is just showing up and doing what you do best because it's already happening and realize it's already happening and then you ask yourself, how did I make it so and how did I make it faster? Um, and a, an example too of this, because people ask when I've been here, what do you think of the whole Trump, the whole Trump thing in the US? And I actually look at it as a bizarre way of another example that we're living in a new time and it's actually a positive thing in a bizarre way because what was happening for so long, and especially with this movement, you know, hidden from the animals of, of all the death and destruction in the factory farms, is that you can't hide, you can't hide the truth anymore. And what happened with the U.S. It wasn't necessarily they, they, they wanted Trump, is that there's something new, and the regime of the, the Hillary Clintons and the higher society of the top 2%, percent that were the Hillary's and the Obama's and the Bush's, that went on and on and on, it was done with. Like, we knew what was going on, it was a secret. And so they wanted something new. So essentially with Trump, it's, it's like a gross analogy, but it's kind of like a zit that, in America at least, everything has been coming to a head of, of reaching to this next level, but the, the, the last part had to pop. And so this, this regime change was the last kind of, of, of exploding out of the worst of the worst of America. Everything is now revealed. The worst of the worst re revealed, the last oozing coming out, and the last of the old is, is, is away. Essentially, I believe if it was Hillary, it would have been another four years of just almost at that point of that breaking point, and then eventually this was gonna happen. And so now it has happened. Everybody is awake now, and for this movement, it's probably the best thing because at least in the US, and I think a lot around the world, we are awake. You've never seen more people awake than in my entire life. There's protests going on all the time. So everybody's aware, everybody's aware. And so now everybody is aware of the truth. And so this movement can really thrive on that because right now people have at least awakened and it's our time right now to, um, to do something with that. And um, I just recently, just like a week ago, I was at a restaurant and I saw there was quote, the entire restaurant had quotes and a very interesting one I saw. It took me a while to what it was. is Mark Chagall, my favorite painter. And it said, the world understands me. And I was like, that's so interesting, because most people think the world doesn't understand me, especially being vegan, nobody understands me. The world doesn't understand me. I'm this warrior, but no one gets it. And it's so important that we have to realize the world does understand you. Your family does understand you. The, your, your people who you don't think understand you realize they do understand you. Because again, you have to have that end result goal and work backwards. This person understands me, the world understands me. Okay, how did they understand me? How do they understand me? And then you look from the other side of how that happened. And that's why Cowspiracy worked, and we we're very present of that, is that we took the viewer on a journey that basically I'm coming over and leading the person who eats meat and doesn't know anything by the hand, I'm starting with that person. Holding their hand, let's go on a journey. Because you don't know this, I'm not going to yell at you, and we don't know this, we're going to go on a journey together and we're going to discover the truth. Nothing is ever said in that film. Watch the entire film. I never say anything to, to do to somebody. I don't think anyone in the film says to, you know, to do this or do that. It's just showing someone the truth and coming from that side of leading them that. And so to remember that is the world does understand you and you have to, you have, to have that mentality that people understand us and how do they understand this um, and to come from that. Again, it's working from the vision at the end and then working backwards, how, to, how did this happen? And that's a, it's a very powerful uh, quote that I found and it was really interesting and that was just like a week ago. Um, so, anyway, so history essentially looks at this moment of us, all the superheroes and this vegan movement as really the most critical time, the most incredible time there's ever been of all the movements this is the only movement that has everything going for it. The civil rights movement, the, the, the feminine, the women's rights movement, uh, gay rights, civil rights, uh, racism, sexism, all these, all these things in the movements that have gone throughout the years, they had mainly one thing for it. They had ethics, that this is not right. And for so long, the animal rights movement had essentially ethics. But the time wasn't there. You have an evolution of, of consciousness. So the ethics is starting to take rule. But this movement is the only movement of all of the movements that have ethics, 
They have sustainability and the environment, the planet, to, for us to survive, and it has health. It's the healthiest way to live. It's by far, and it's being proven now. So we have all three sexually cylinders that no other movement have. And the other big thing that we have is we have the internet, we have social media, and we have this universal one that is exponentially happening so fast. So realize and download and accept how fast this is happening. And it is happening, and visualize that it's happening fast. Don't look at the parts that's not happening, visualize the part that's happening. I don't know if there's any, 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 has anybody ever hang glided before. I've only done it one time. But like in all life, and especially hang gliding, if you hang glide and you look this way, even if you're forcing this way, it's the most bizarre thing. You look this way, all of a sudden you're going to go this way. And it's a metaphor for life. If you see it happening slow, if you see this not happening, your reality will fit that. You're going to be depressed. You know, but if you see this happening super fast and that it already has happened, you're enjoying the ride. You're realizing, wow, I'm part of the future. I'm not part of the, fast, the past. What am I doing to help this go even faster? And you're enjoying it, and you're enjoying the ride because this is what's happening. And um, it's, it's a wonderful time to live because it honestly is. So, so it's a good thing to enjoy while, while uh, we're in this incredible transformation. Um, and, and really, just to end on, so another beautiful thing that, that I've learned is if anyone has heard of Thich Nhat Hanh, he's a Tibetan Buddhist. And, and he's a beautiful, beautiful, he's essentially Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat Hanh, he's one of the main Tibetan Buddhists. And he once, someone asked him what's his greatest gift he's ever given, been given. And he said the gift of being a vegetarian, he's a vegan. The gift of being vegetarian. And like how beautiful is that? It's not something that, it's a burden on us. It's that we've literally been gifted and we've been like tapped on with the lights come on to us. And it's the most grateful thing that he's ever had. And to realize how grateful we all are to being shown the light, to be able to live this. Sometimes it hasn't happened until people, you know, in the very end of life, in the end of life, or some happens younger. But just be so grateful at all times that you've been blessed this, because it truly is a gift. And I just want everyone to visualize in the future that has already happened now. Everybody is vegan. The rivers are coming back. The animals are coming back. All the, the, the animals that have been extinct or almost extinct are coming back. Compassion is settling in. Wars are diminishing. We're all becoming one. Everything is beautiful again. The sun is shining. But the, the temperature of the global warming is cooling down. The rainforest is actually regrowing again. And we're entering this garden of bliss, again, the Garden of Eden. And it is already happening. It is already happening. It started in 2012. And it is happening at an exponential level. And all we do is ask, how did I make this happen? So thank you.